Hello folks and welcome back to Star Citizen. Since the last video I've been playing a lot of this game, mostly just grinding money and uh, gotten quite a few new ships and stuff like that. Also gotten a lot more experience with combat. I'm not sure, there was a video I was going to post of this uh, doing some bounty hunting stuff. I'm not sure if I posted it yet or not. I'm going to assume not. But uh, let me just show you what I've gotten since last time real fast. And explain what we're going to go do today. I'm trying to remember. Okay, so what I have now is the Gladius. The uh, Aegis Vanguard Harbinger is one of the newer ones I got. And I've been using the heck out of it. It is a awesome, awesome ship. I'd heard, um, the reason I went with this one instead of, like, the Sentinel is this one has torpedoes, and I do like throwing missiles and stuff, so I've just really been enjoying this, and don't mind the two, the, uh, it's been bugging out and giving me multiple ships, as you can see with the Cutlass Black. I've also bought a, uh, Drake Caterpillar, which I haven't really used that much yet, and a Cutlass Red, which has really come in handy for doing FPS missions. Now if I get bugged out or die or something, I can respawn in the ship right outside, which is awesome. Got a Freelancer Durr, which is the Expedition variant. Uh, I think the last video I was using the Max. Also got a Prospector, but I haven't really gotten too far into mining yet. Uh, I needed to do an episode doing some mining and trying out refining and stuff. Just don't feel like it right now. I don't know why I got the Reliant M Mako, Mako, Mako. Uh, maybe just because it was a, a random reporting ship. There's no real utility for it. I don't really know why I got that. My Sen has been in limbo being destroyed for a long time, and I do not want to do an account reset just at the risk of losing things, so I haven't got that back. Also, this is the one I'm going to use this time, the Constellation Aquila. I rented a Andromeda, and it was the first time I'd ever used one, and I actually really liked it. I know that there's problems with the Constellations. They have shield holes, and they really need a rework and stuff. The, uh, as much as I liked the Andromeda, the, uh, view out of the front was kind of not good. And I just, something, there's something I really like about the Aquila. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's got a, got a charm to it. And, uh, I've used it some. In fact, I've used it in combat and stuff. One other thing I should mention is all these ships I've got, I have spent a lot of money on upgrades for them. Now that I'm actually able to make enough money to buy ships in game, I've been upgrading them so that I can actually get a better read on uh, if I like them or not when they're upgraded because stock versions are just not a good example. Uh, anyways, I'll uh, get us out into space and I'll show you around this thing. It's pretty cool. I'll show you, uh, give you a walk around right here. It's kind of a, a strange looking ship. It's a, uh, but I really, really like it. As you can see, I've put some new weapons on it. I'll show you what uh, components I put in this thing as soon as we get out. But yeah, it's a, it's a weird looking ship. For some reason it almost reminds me of a dinosaur or something. But I really like the cockpit on this one. It's got a much better, uh, field of view or, you know, it's much clearer to see through than the standard, uh, Constellation Andromeda. It was expensive though. I believe this one was a little under 5 million Alpha UEC. Got an elevator here that brings us right up, and there's also a big elevator here that drops down that you can put a rover on. We're gonna try to do that. One of the things about this ship is it's supposed to, um, be able to come with an Ursa rover. I already own one, though. Let me just power this up so we can see. In fact, let me get off the landing deck so we don't get our ship stored on us. Hold on. Pull away from Tressler for a minute. Drop that landing gear, or raise that landing gear. Landing gear raised. So this is the Expedition variant. It doesn't have as many missiles as the, uh, it should have more than this though. I've had this interesting thing happening lately where it won't uh, fully restock me on a bunch of ships. It's kind of irritating. It doesn't have as many missiles as the uh, Andromeda, and it's supposed to have a turret radar, but I don't think it's functional. There's a turret right down here that you can get into. Obviously, I don't use them because I'm alone. But yeah, you got a few co-pilot seats. Uh, it's this really cool bridge. Turret, and uh, I don't think any of this stuff's functional. Going back here is like your hab area. It's like a shower, and I think there's supposed to be a toilet there. I don't know why there isn't. 
These things, like I said, they're in dire need of a rework. Uh, and there's also supposed to be a table that folds up, but uh, it doesn't right now. It only gives me the option to sit. Got some uh, lockers, which I don't know what you do with those. Got some four beds. Apparently these are supposed to in the future function as the escape pods, but uh, yeah, right now they're just beds. And going into the back, this is the big cargo bay. This whole thing is like an elevator that drops down. Now I've tried to put an Ursa rover on this thing a few times and it's been catastrophic. <laughs> We're gonna try it again. Go do some just random things in this. Got some airlocks out the side. It shows you a whole ton of missiles, but this doesn't seem accurate to the actual number you hold. The other side's the same. And in the back here, this is another gameplay feature that's not implemented yet. There is a snub fighter. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a P, I don't actually know. I think it's a P-52 that's in there right now. Uh, I'll show you when we land. It's actually hanging off the bottom. And you're supposed to be able to get into this thing and, you know, disconnect and uh, go fly around with it and then come back and dock. It doesn't work yet. I can't even get in it. But anyways. So I'm going to go down to a planet and we're going to try to put an Ursa in this thing one more time. The last few times, well, you'll probably see. It's, it's not gone well. <laughs> the Tumbral Cyclones seem to be fine. But uh, for some reason, even though the Ursa fits, every time I raise the elevator, it just starts freaking out and getting stuck in the ship. Which is nice. Let's find somewhere on the planet. Uh, whatever. Let's just go to the research outpost. So most of what I've been doing for money, it's not... It's uh, just a loop that has been pretty lucrative for me. Where I go and I do the uh, illegal monitors missions and go and clear the 890 jump, which I've already shown in a video of that. And I just kind of cycle through that. If I run out of monitor missions over around Microtech, I just head out to Hurston. You can also pick up a 890 jump mission off of uh, Art Corp. But generally, I've just been staying around Microtech, just grinding money, trying to get ships to uh, mess around with. Trading is kind of weird right now. It's... Um, from what I've done, trying to do some, it seems like it's, with all the 30Ks and disconnects, um, it just doesn't seem like the risk reward is uh, good enough, because you don't, at least I don't make a ton of profit off of it, unless I dump a huge amount of money into it, and that's a big risk, considering you can get disconnected at any time. Uh, it just doesn't seem like the profits are that great right now, um, if I want to make a lot of money, I just do a circuit of those monitor missions and uh, stuff. I also made a lot of money um, in the video I was talking about when I first got my Harbinger and I got it set up. Going around doing bounty hunting missions around Hurston. AI bounty hunting missions. I don't really, not really interested in PvP. But I've been making a lot of money this way. It's been, it's been good. But uh, it's time to go do something else because I'm tired of doing those over and over probably go kill some monitors or something just to show you how this thing does with fighting. I was hoping to land somewhere in the daylight, but whatever. So yeah, it's a pretty big ship. It's a uh, it's a little it's more agile than I thought it would be, but it's not very agile. All right, let's put down over here. But yeah, the, uh, I recorded about an hour and a half of really fun combat footage using the Harbinger bounty hunting, but um, I didn't do commentary on it. I was sick at the time and I just really didn't want to talk, but it was really fun, so I did save the footage. So I was going to make a video on that, just going to take a little longer because um, I've got to do like an overdub kind of commentary instead of doing it live like I'm doing here. So let's go drop the... Elevator in the back. Come on. Oh Wait, I'm supposed to do it from wait. Can I do it from down here? I'm not sure after my first. Okay. Hmm uh, After my first experience First few experiences trying to load our Ursa on this thing. I haven't really done a lot with rovers in this I also haven't ran cargo in it yet, so I might see what that looks like Let's just let that go go down this way Shame that it's dark, but it's all right. Okay, let's go find the vehicle terminal, and we'll see if I can get Nurse in there. It's funny because if you buy this thing, I think probably with real money, 
Uh, it's supposed to come with one, but <laughs> every time I've tried to put one in there, it's it's not gone well at all. One other thing I didn't know, which I guess figures, is that uh, ships and stuff you bought with Alpha UEC do not persist if they do a game wipe. I guess I kind of figured, but the reason I didn't know for sure is because there's not been a wipe since I've started playing. I've been playing for about 10 months, maybe 11. So I was thinking that persistence was here to stay. Maybe it is, but from what I've read, wipes will uh, remove the ships you buy in game. And the only ship I actually own still is an Aurora. So I've just been trying to get as many as I can to try out before they're taken away. Hopefully it won't happen for a while, but uh, gotta claim it. We'll give it a try. That's supposed to be one of the selling points of these uh, constellations, is that they can put an Ursa in there. Now, I've tried, a, I've tried a bunch of things to make it not freak out when I do this. I mean, from, from what I've read, the, uh, the best way to make sure there's no problems is to make sure your rover's off. But I've done that. Hopefully it'll go okay. It was pretty comical the first few times. Ursa is a uh, cool rover. Until they put those other, I think, Origin rovers in. I think they're the biggest, other than the Ballista, but that's more of a military vehicle than just a rover. I don't have one of those because I don't have anything I can put it in. Oops. Um, I done fucked up. Come on, tip me over. Tip me over. You can do it, Star Citizen. What did I hit? Like a little tiny rock? Now I'm fused with this building. This is great. Bless you, Star Citizen. Come on. Oh. Saved it. Okay, let's not go so fast. Try to do this carefully. I'm willing to bet that it's gonna have a, a seizure. Okay. Lights on. Okay. Are we too far forward? I can't really tell. It fits, just not... It's pretty tight fit. Okay. That should be good, so let's turn it off. Go out the back, because you can't get out the side. Let's start the apocalypse by trying to load. I wonder if turning the ship off? I mean, that shouldn't be a thing. The ship's not, but let's just try it. Oh, here you can see the uh, snub fighter. Shame that I can't disconnect it and use it. These constellations are in all dire need of, an, of a rework. Let's try it. And it's gonna have a heart attack, isn't it? Oh, oh no. You see what I mean? <laughs> like... Why? It was sitting there perfectly. It's there. You gotta love Star Citizen. Excuse me, are you done? Are you done? It somehow landed right back where it needed to be. If anyone knows a trick to making this not do this, please let me know. I'm new to the constellation, and I've never hauled a Ursa before. I need to move it forward, but now I'm worried about getting into it. Hold on. Yeah, okay, there we go. I was gonna say it's not gonna turn on, but it did. Honestly, I should cut my losses and just take this thing off right now, before it gets stuck forever, but I'll try turning the ship off. See if that makes a difference. I really like the elevator design and how it drops down like that. It's really cool, I just wish it uh, worked better. Off. That'd be a little bit weird if you had to actually power the ship down every time you load a rover, but, you know. It's Star Citizen. Sometimes you just gotta improvise. Okay, it's probably gonna freak out and bump into me and kill me. And, oh no. Are 
Are you gonna settle? I wonder what would happen if I flew away with it freaking out and all janky like this. I mean, it's in here. <laughs> it just wasn't pretty. Alright, well, yeah, let's just fly. We explode in mid-flight, so be it. Now, the only reason to load this thing was to go, you know, land somewhere, drive it up. I guess we'll go do a bunker mission or something. I was wanting to, like, use this thing to go around and explore different places, but, um... Yeah, let's, let's just go do a bunker mission. FPS combat might be a little janky, but, uh... Oh, there's one of those money-making missions. Yeah, what I usually do is I do this, and then I go do these. And then, uh, if I want to just really meta the money, then I'll just switch servers after I clear them all out and then, you know, do them again. But, uh, let's do a occupant. Calio. Ah, hate going to Calio. Alright. Okay. Let's take off and try not to die. What do you know? It's an interesting ship. It almost reminds me of Serenity, you know, like a Firefly ship. If you're familiar with that show, rest in peace. Almost. Like an ugly version of it. A charmingly ugly version. Okay. It does take a little bit to get out of Atmo. So yeah, there's a, uh, a turret in the back that is not a turret. It's like supposed to be like a uh, super powerful scanner or something. As far as I know, it doesn't do anything right now, which sucks. Seems like that's the story of Star Citizen. These ships that have, like, gameplay loops that uh, aren't in the game yet, like the Drake Herald and the, uh, the Reclaimer and stuff like that. Even the Mako, Mako, that I bought. Uh, it's kind of like the Sen, except for it has, like, a bank that has a ton of MFDs which are these things. That's another thing I really like about this constellation, is there's seven MFDs up here. I don't have to switch between them or open my Moby glass to get what I want. Uh, but yeah, the Mako has like a, instead of a science station in the back, it has like a, a desk with like a bunch of MFDs, and you're supposed to be able to use a turret mounted, gimbal mounted uh, camera on it, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So it's kind of just a novelty. Real quick, I'll show you what I got as far as components go on this thing. So yeah, it's got a bunch of missiles, uh, got a XL1 quantum drive on it, which is really good. Two snowpack coolers, which honestly I think you're probably better off with cool cores because these are like 30,000 more and they're only like 800 more cooling, so I don't know why I bought these. The two JS400s in the power plant, FR76 and a Rampart shield, and um, it's not letting me go down to the weapons right now. Anyways, I've got these on them. It actually does pretty good at uh, PvE, to be honest. I haven't done anything really difficult in it, like going after high crime stat bounties or anything, but just for taking out normal ships, it does pretty good. Especially if you uh, overclock it, which is a new phenomenon that I did not know about before and that I now do most of the time. Don't need to do it right now. We've done plenty of bunker miss missions, that's not what this is about. I'm just, uh, it's just about me utilizing the, uh, constellation for a few odds and ends. Basically, anytime I'm not recording, I'm just grinding money. So, nice to take a break and go do something else. Doesn't have to be lucrative. I'm a little worried about what's gonna happen when I when I drop this thing. I might leave the Ursa back on the on this moon when I'm done with it, so that I can go... So that I can go put a bit of cargo in this thing, since I haven't tried that yet. So, yeah, this, um... This ship was actually more expensive than the, uh, the Caterpillar. I think the Cat was 4 point... Like, around 4.1 million, and this was a little under 5. So I'm not sure that that's a fair price, especially considering that there's missing features right now. Like the snub fighter and the radar. Also, the uh, the Andromeda is like 3.5 million, but uh, I just want something I don't see very often. I see lots of Andromedas around, but I don't really see Aquila's much. Or Phoenix's, which are the luxury ones. But those are even more expensive than this. Okay, I don't want to get too close here. I'm gonna be real bummed out if I drop the elevator in this thing, um... If I, uh, drop the elevator and this thing, like, flips or something, and I'm far away. 
Yeah, I suppose you could use this to haul around a rock too, but I don't think that would be wise considering the elevator. Probably better to do that in a uh, freelancer or a uh, cutlass black or something. Oh, this place sucks. I forgot about this one. This is the one down in the crater. Crap. Um, we're gonna need to come over this way. It's flying in third person so I can find a good flat-ish place to land. How far away are we? Maybe I could get a little closer. Yeah, probably better to land in here. Far are we? I'm fine with driving a little ways. Okay, maybe it's up over the next hill. I might be wrong. Yeah, I think it is. Alright. Just gotta find somewhere relatively flat. Just trying to stay out of the turret line of fire. I think we're alright. Guess it doesn't have to be perfect. This is why I don't like doing these bunker missions on moons when I, uh, have a rover. Uh... Did I put my landing gear down? Oh, crap. Well, that might be important. We're almost in the view of the turrets here. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I see. Okay, um... Let's see. You know what, let's just try it. Probably not gonna find a perfect place out here. I also didn't need to get this close if I was bringing a rover out, but whatever. If it was daytime, I'm sure I could have found somewhere better. Here goes nothing. Really? Oh! Oh! This is how we die. Okay. You know what? No, I didn't want to climb the ladder, actually. Thanks. They need to get rid of the automatic ladder climbing. I hate that. There we go. Well. That was messy. I think in the future I'll probably use a cyclone. Because I've loaded those on this a few times and not had any problems. It's been a long time since I've used the Ursa. Welcome to Robin Space Industries. Enjoy Can we uh, even get out of here? There we go. Alright. <laughs> okay. Pretty sure this thing is not as good at off-roading as the Cyclones, but... I might be wrong. Okay. We're fine. Reminds me of, uh, driving that Mako or whatever it was called on Mass Effect around. Here we go. I haven't actually done a bunker mission in a while. I haven't, hadn't, haven't had any need to because, uh, the other contracts I've been doing have paid a lot better and they're all out in space. Yeah, the AI is still stupid. I did find out that uh, they are even more dumb, though, if you have a suppressor on. Apparently they're even more, um, derpy. Because they just straight up can't hear him. It's really weird, though, like, um... Especially lately, I've had a few times when I've gone on these missions where they've, like... They've been really on it, and they'll, like, kill me really fast. It's really weird. Sometimes they just stand there like they have no clue what's happening and just let you kill them, but... Okay. Yeah, they don't seem like they're very on it here. One day, one day they'll fix the AI. There's lots of... 3.12 has had a lot of issues. Oh. I would love for them to fix this. Hi, guys. Yeah, FPS combat is not exactly thrilling. It's just a uh, money grind. And the, the thing is, when they do actually react properly, they kill you super fast in a very non-legit way. But, uh, yeah. FPS is, uh, I mean, the gunplay is great in this game. I love it. I love the guns and how they sound and feel and the animations and 
they, it's uh, really polished as far as, I mean, aside from like, sometimes they don't fire, obviously. But the AI just needs a lot of work. But that's not the point of this little adventure. It was to uh, load the rover into the Aquila. We'll drive it back over to the ship, but I'm not going to put it back in because I want to go do something else. So we'll leave our Ursa here. I really do like the Ursa, though. It's really cool. The, um... I really like how you can, uh, you know, sit in the back and stuff. I wish they would add some things like... like box missions and stuff... uh, for the ground vehicles. Because you can actually put them in here. Oh yeah, I got some new armor to, uh... The, um... Fortifier armor I've used before. That, or that Citadel and stuff. Uh, I found a green version of it at Levski. Oh, um, yeah, apparently they're going to remove Levski from, or, or Delamar from the verse. Apparently it wasn't meant for this system originally, and they just kind of put it in for one reason or another, but apparently they're going to remove it and uh, include it in a future system. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to have Levski for a whole lot longer until next update, I think, they're removing it. Which is kind of sad, I like Lovski. There's not a whole ton to do there, but there is a nice ship shop, and uh, you can get some things there you can't get anywhere else, like the armor I'm wearing. Apparently they're gonna keep the shops, they're just gonna like move them somewhere. I'm assuming they're just gonna make a space station or something. Now comes the fun part of getting out of the atmosphere and away from these turrets. The shields I have are pretty good though, they can take some hits. Guess we can ride the cargo bay up. I guess when you load... This thing hold not, holds 96 SCU, so it does hold a decent amount of cargo. But apparently it all goes right here. Never done it before in this, so that's what we're gonna go do now. Actually, you know what? I might go do a quick little uh, monitor mission or something to show you the guns on this. Show you how it does with killing stuff. Uh, before I forget, let's overclock everything. Why does it have a scorpion? Oh, that's a turret. Okay. Yeah, CF447 Rhinos are what I have for the uh, gimbaled weapons. Don't need to overclock the Gatlings because those are, um, those are turrets. I generally use energy weapons with PVEs, just so that I don't have to, uh... refill ammunition, run out, worry about running out of ammunition all the time. There's a few that I really, really love. But these ones aren't bad. Let's try not to get blown out of the sky. Yeah, they're shooting at me. Pretty cool view of it. Yeah, I like the color on it, too. Pretty cool. Okay, now that we're lighter in the, the cargo bay, I'm tempted to go do this just because I want to make money, but I guess that will have some combat in it. I'm just going to go, I'll cut through this fairly fast. I'm just going to go do this. We should fight some ships over there. I've already done a few of these on video before. Fairly recently. These are good money though. Um, they're uh, more simple than they used to be. I never did them before they made them easier. Uh, the way they used to work was that you had to, you were timed. And you had to, like, go, um, hack something, or... I can't remember. But now, they're a fairly reliable way of making money. Uh, lately I've been using that Cutlass Red when I go do these. Which, the Cutlass Red is awesome, but it doesn't have missiles. It also doesn't have a top turret, but that's okay if you're playing solo. But, uh, I've got a few NN14 Neutron cannons on it, and it's been great. Like I said, you can set your preferred ICU in the uh, back in the med bay, so that if you die, you just respawn there. It's great on these 890 missions. So let's just hope we don't die. There's freak things that can happen in here. Like the AI randomly growing a brain and just annihilating you, or you can like, fall through elevators and get stuck, or get stuck behind some automatic doors. It's really wonderful. It's a true star, star citizen experience of figuring out how to work around all the bugs. Got a few hostiles. They're always like Cutlass Blacks. It overheats really fast with its overclock, but it fires really fast. Weapons 
some good hits on him. This thing can, it can take a few hits, even though apparently there's shield holes. Uh, if you're not PvPing, you'll be okay there. That was pretty fast. There's this other guy. Oh, uh, trying to get close, are we? Might not want to do that. Yeah, you're dead. That was fast. Okay. So we have a docking collar on the left and right. You don't really want to go in a zero atmosphere with one of the elevators. It's kind of a clusterfuck. So the docking collars are also a little weird to exit and enter. Let's go up a little there. But they're still better than going in and out of the elevators into zero G. Oh, I forgot to raise the... That's interesting. What is happening? Why can't I raise the... I think it might have bugged out. I've never seen it do this before. Cool. Okay. Well, whatever. EVA likes to do some funky things when you exit your ship lately. Been doing so many of these lately. It's just like almost automatic. Now if I ever buy an 890 jump, I'll know my way around every part of it. Oh, they're gonna... They're a little more alert. That's probably a bad thing, because now they're gonna like shoot me through a wall or something fantastic. Or just stand there and look stupid. I guess the ladder. Hey, buddy. Ah, <laughs> uh, they really need to fix the AI. It's very unsatisfying killing these guys. Yeah, if you're uh, thinking about getting into Star Citizen and you want to get into it for FPS combat, don't. <laughs> it's definitely one of the low points of the game. Only because of how the AI acts. If they were good, then the gunplay and the FPS combat would be great in this game. Like I said, I love how the weapons handle and stuff. And I love the weapons. But holy hell. Also, the, um... The PvE combat, dealing with some of the enemy ships, is kind of desynced right now. Apparently that's a fix with 3.12.1, whenever they put that out. So the aiming pips will kind of jump all over the place sometimes. In an unnatural way. Makes them hard to hit now and then. This is where I get stuck sometimes. If you don't get through there fast enough, both of these will close and it won't detect that you're in there and you'll have to respawn. Also with the elevator I came down, I find that if you jump onto it when you go in, you're less likely to fall through it and get stuck. Sweep around. Oh, hello. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> A few friendlies. Usually these guys are dead, but... Love this thing. Oh, it hit that guy too. That was cool. Oh. They're trying to become one being down there. Yeah, no reaction whatsoever. Gotta love it. And let's get out of here. But hey, 45,000 Alpha UEC if you do this on your own. It's pretty good. I think before it was, before they raised the price, it was, it was a, or the payout, it was not that good. It was like, oh, it was still good. It was like 20,000 something, but uh, let's do some janky. You know what? What is with this? Hold on. EA for a minute. Try to get this stupid ramp to close. I'm gonna need it to close. I might have to hop the server or something. This thing is not reacting. Okay, fine. Pull your gun out. Nope. Well, that's good. I might have to switch servers. And uh, put this thing back in a station. Never seen that, and I've used this Aquila quite a lot, and I've never had the cargo bay 
stick open before. Alright, I'm gonna bring this thing back to a station and, uh, store it and swap servers. Damn it! Another new phenomenon. You gotta, you gotta be careful when that airlock opens. And that's what happens half the time. When you're on your way in, you hit the... You hit the bottom and you just fall on your face. But yeah, the first time I ever came back in through that airlock, it whipped open like that and it whacked me. And it just shot me oh, way out into space. I would just log out in my bed, but that is a major no-no right now. You do not want to do that. There's, um, there's a chance that you can get stuck, not able to log back in for a while. Uh, and then you have to do a bunch of weird workarounds to, uh, to get back into the server. So don't log out in your bed, especially around Microtech, and especially if you have a mission active. I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, the uh, claim time is pretty high. Even expedited, it's like four and a half minutes, so uh, I have to wait for a minute. This has been a new phenomenon with the AI. Like, they carry around these mops and like other stuff, and then they just leave them all over the place. I think, let's go do a, I'll do a monitor mission real quick. To do a little more shooty-shooty with this thing. Let's see, where is this one? Kelly, all right. Just keep this AI company till it shows up. Oh, um, yeah, the armor. Uh, you can't really see it well here. Hold on. It's like the same as that other stuff I've been using, but you can see it's got like a logo on it, and it's a green. Pretty cool. It's the um, I got it at Levski. What's it called? The armor. The helmet is the fortifier helmet. Um, another new phenomenon. It likes to not put your helmet on. Yeah, fortifier helmet, dark green. And then the, uh, the armor is the Citadel SE, I guess, special edition or something. But I found that at, at Levski, so. If you don't have it, go get it before Levski disappears. Of course, it might be available like Grim Hex or something. I'm not sure. I haven't been over there in a long time, so. Well, okay. Obviously claiming it fixed it. You know, I think other than the Caterpillar, this is the biggest ship that I have now. Caterpillar is obviously pretty big. Um, I'm gonna wait until I have a little bit more surplus money. I have quite a bit now, but it, it's really expensive to fill that thing up. The Caterpillar, and like I said, trading is a little iffy, but uh, yeah, this one's it's pretty big. For how big it is, it actually feels fairly nimble. But okay, let's go do this. Then maybe we'll go put some cargo Thank in this you. thing. Please visit again. Oh, I need to, uh... Probably not necessary, but I'm just gonna overclock ever anyways. Trying to get into the habit of doing that. There's a few ships that I really shouldn't, that I can't overclock. Um, one weird thing that's been happening with my freelancers lately is if I overclock them, it just loses all power and I can't turn it back on. And I don't know why, even though uh, all the components are are fine with it. Like, uh, it produces enough power, it's just, it must be a bug, because it just shuts off mid-flight and I have to exit the server to fix it. It's really weird. It didn't actually happen at first, but uh, it's been happening lately. So these monitor missions, like I said, they're a really good way to make money, especially if you have something with some decent guns on it. I've done it in just about every ship I have done these. Scan. There we go. Three monitors, and I mean, you can, you can. It's like twenty grand in under five minutes. So, especially if you know how to, you get into the hang of how to do these. It's gonna be slower in this ship because it's slow, but they overheat so fast when they're overclocked. But all right, they cool off really quick. Could just throw missiles at them, but I try not to do that. Oh. Just these little satellite things floating around. One down. You got less than five minutes to get all three. It's weird when I try to do this in the uh, the Gladius. It's like my scanner doesn't have. It might not have the same range or something because all. I have to work a lot harder to get these. Uh, these pips show up when I scan. I don't think it has the same scanning range. I don't really know a whole lot about the difference in scanners. 
but uh, the Gladius or any light fighter I've tried to do it in, it seems like I have a really hard time finding these. Two down. Another contact, where are you? Oh, that's a hostile. Usually I just go for the monitors and then, um, a good trick to make sure you don't wander too far away from the satellites is to uh, put a quantum marker back on it once you get here. And then usually before I kill the last monitor, I remove it. I wait till I see the last monitor and have it targeted, then I remove the quantum jump. And then I kill the last monitor and then I just quantum away to an outer marker or an OM. And uh, avoid these hostiles. Or sometimes I fight them. If you have the, um, like this guy is bugging me right now. So let's throw a bunch of missiles at him. Too far away. I need to get the monitor. I need to just ignore these guys for a minute. There we go. I'll deal with them after. But yeah, you can just jump away from them. Sometimes they'll... Uh, sometimes they'll jam your quantum. But usually you don't have to mess with them. But if you have the, um... Called... Oh, damn it! The mission bugged out. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes you just have to scan more. Wait a minute. Why do I have four... Oh, there it is. Oh, I got three bad guys. Let's get this monitor and deal with these guys. Every now and then it won't... Whoa, let's not hit it. Oh my goodness. Every now and then it won't spawn the last monitor, which sucks. But usually it just bugs out the waypoint for a minute. Did you die already? Damn. All right. Now let's kill these guys just because. Uh, what was I saying? If you have the call to arms mission active, it's worth your time taking these guys out because you'll make a little extra money. I mean, it's kind of worth your time if you can kill them quickly. You get a you know extra 500 to 1500 taking these guys. And I missed, didn't I? Happens. Oop. Oop, that was fast. Another cutlass black. Probably the most common thing you run into doing these missions. Try missiles again. Three. That's all she wrote. Okay, that went all right. Now I'm gonna go to see the the best luck I've had with running cargo so far has been uh, around Hurston. Seems like when I try other places, they're always sold out. So I'm gonna go over to Hurston and one of the HDMS places. I think it was Pinewood. I usually have luck with buying something that's actually somewhat worth you know, trading. You can actually make some profit, so. Head on out to Hurston. The quantum drive this thing comes with by default is awful. Like, uh, it was worth the 94000 to put an XL1 in this. It's so much faster. I guess I can go take a look at these turrets while we're quantum jumping here. Obviously something I never use because I don't have, uh, multi-crew. Someone did invite me to an organization, but uh, I find it kind of weird when people invite me to things without like making contact with me first, so I just ignored it. Like I'd be fine with messing around in an org, but when you just invite me without saying anything, it's kind of like, okay, can't shoot. Bottom turret. Pretty trippy riding around in these things. Uh, but that being said, I haven't done any multi-cruise stuff. Because I don't actually uh, know anyone, any of my friends, that actually play this. 
anyways. I haven't actually gotten into the other turret, I don't think. I did on the uh, Andromeda. Where is it? Is this it? Is that actually an airlock, or...? I don't know if I want to open that. Where's the other turret? Is it back here? It's supposed to be like a scanner turret on this thing, but I haven't actually looked for it. It must be that back there. Let's wait till we're out of quantum to try to get into that. Last thing I want to do is <laughs> jump out of the ship in the middle of a quantum jump, even though it might be amusing. That's probably it. I think we're just about done. Frame rate's going to hell, which means we're probably almost there. Yeah, I really like the, just the space in the bridge in this thing. In the back, there's not a lot of space, but, uh, I don't know, I like, I like that. Being able to kind of just move around, if I so choose. The, uh, co-pilot 1 and 2, and co-pilot and co-pilot assistant, I guess. Seats both have one MFD. But, I mean, I've got seven. You can't see the, there's a few up here. Love having the, uh, comlink one right there in the middle. Yeah, lately when I've been trying to do cargo, like I said, I've been having a lot of problems. A lot of places are sold out, so I end up having to jump around to a bunch of different places to find something worth actually loading into the ship. Last time I went here, I think I got a load of diamonds, and I filled up a max, a freelancer max with it, which is 120 SCU, which is more than this. And I made like, um, maybe 13 grand off of it or something. But I mean, that was a long adventure, going and landing and loading it and then going, you have to go to the trade division terminals in main, major cities to sell that. So you gotta go land in Lorville, you know, get out, ride the train, go there. In that amount of time, I could have gone, done, you know, four or five monitor missions and made, you know, 80 to 100 grand, so. It is nice to do other things, but if you're just trying to make money, it's not very efficient. It might uh, be more worthwhile filling up the cat with something really expensive. Like right now, I think it's mostly Laranite and I uh, uh, can't remember what else. Titanium or something is the best to trade. But it's such a risk. I mean, you disconnect, you just lost all your money. Another look at this thing. you want to bet they'll be all sold out of anything worth hauling over here. Really, I just want to see what cargo looks like in the back of this. Isn't, uh... Not really going for maximum profits here. If I can't find something good, I'll just load something in it. Still prefer landing in third person. Although I have started use a lot, utilizing auto landing more often. At least at stations. If I was flying with double joysticks, it might be different, but I'm not... It's a mouse and keyboard for me. Okay. I like the, um... I like the ambient blue lights that RSI ships have when you turn them off. Okay, let's find that storage... ...building. Am I tripping or is this not loaded? This is the thing I need to go into. You gotta love stuff like this. Just wait a minute. It'll pop up. Okay. What do we got? I have 900 grand. They have diamonds. That's gonna be the best. It's gonna be the most expensive anyway. So here we go. 60,000. 60,245. I'm not an expert on trading, so it might make me a little more profit if I go to, like, New Babbage or, uh, Area 18, but I'm gonna go to Lorville because it's closest. Obviously, you wouldn't want to use this thing as, like, a normal cargo ship. It does hold a decent amount of SCU, but the, uh, exploration gameplay loop isn't really in yet. Not to mention the scanner on this thing doesn't work, so. Alright, get out of here before something horrible happens. I'm always nervous running cargo, which makes me even more apprehensive to go, you know, spend like millions and filling up that caterpillar. So far, the most money I've had on me, uh, before I blew it all, was, uh, 
Oh, it was about 5.2 million. And that was a lot, a lot of monitor missions and 890 missions. That was a lot of grinding. I do not like going to Lorville. I mean, I love Lorville. I just, just don't like going there. Every city is just such a effort to get to where you can sell stuff. To get to the uh, trade division, you always gotta land, go up into the airport, take a train. The things like, um, things like gems, you can obviously sell at other places. You can sell them back to the mining outposts you got them near, or at admin terminals and stations and stuff, but, uh, or, and whatnot, you gotta sell in, in major cities now. I believe that changed when they added the refining and stuff. That's something I still need to do. I've only taken the prospector out to mine once since I bought it. It was a lot better now that it's all upgraded because I own it. But uh, I haven't actually tried refining yet. So that's something I gotta do sometime here. I just hate the landing zones here at Hurston. I wish they had some like, like it's a planet you can breathe on. They should have some like open air landing pads or something. Because going into these little hangars that are like, you know, in the ground, you gotta go through the doors, the hangar doors, I don't know, I, I just don't like it. Don't like the landing pads you have to go in vertically to. They never want to give me a big hangar. This is gonna be interesting. Land again. I hate doing this. With a small ship, it's fine, but I hate landing here. You could always go in nose first, I guess, but I don't, know. I don't really want to do that. And they have this annoying habit of sometimes closing the hangar door when you're almost there and you have to call again. Will it fit? It always looks like it's not going to fit. There we go. <laughs> Barely. Now let's, uh, hurry over to the business district. One ship that, um, I really want to get, but they don't have it viable in game yet, is the, uh, Crusader Mercury Star Runner. I really like what I've seen from that ship on videos, uh, just don't have the money to dump into buying ships with the real money right now. I am going to upgrade at some point here, probably to um, get a Cuddy Black instead of my Aurora. Because if there is a wipe and I'm stuck back with an Aurora and my starting 5,000 UEC, AUEC or 1,000 or whatever I had when I first started this game, I'm going to be really bummed out. Cuddy Black has probably been one of the most useful ships I've ever had. And uh, it'd be cheaper for me to just... Uh, cross chassis upgrade on the store to that so it's the ship I own because it is really just the Swiss army knife of this game it is uh, useful for just about everything you can put cargo in it you can fight with it you can put a rover in it including a rock it's just a great ship to have the cutlass red you can put a, a like a gray cat PTV in the back but you couldn't put anything bigger the black is just a uh, if I could have one ship it would be the black the freelancer is great uh, but it's kind of a pain to put a rock into, like the base Freelancer. Just for the price and uh, for how useful it is, definitely Cutlass Black. Gotta say though, I never get tired of the views in Lorville, as much as I don't like landing here. Right now the uh, trains in New Babbage are extremely unreliable, sometimes the doors just won't open. So at least the trains here never have that problem. But I've basically been spending the majority of my time at Microtech. Because kind of everything I need is over there right now. I know it was a lot quicker for you guys because I edited through it. But having to do this every time, or even at you know, other cities, it's about the same amount of time to get to the trade division terminals. Having to do this every time, especially with the risk of disconnects to make money. Yeah, they definitely need a fix make trading you know better because it's in my opinion it, the amount of time you spend is just not worth it alongside the risk 
for the uh, kind of profit you actually get. Maybe I'll change my mind if we do a... Uh, do a caterpillar video here pretty soon. And I, like, spend a lot of money. But, I don't know. I haven't ran anything too expensive yet, either. Like, Lara and I, I think, is the most expensive right now. Okay, please don't bug out. Please let me sell. I hate those sun glares. Okay, so I spent, what, 60,200 something? See what I mean? I made, what, five grand? <laughs> now, you can scale that up. Obviously, it was diamonds, okay? It's not gonna be that great. And I probably could have made a better profit if I went somewhere else, maybe, I'm not sure. But risk reward is just not really there. Yay, <laughs> profit wasn't really the point though. I just wanted to put cargo in that thing. All right, well anyways, I think we'll stop here. I've been actually recording for a lot longer than I thought. But yeah, the uh, Akil is a really cool ship. Even though the kind of its purpose it, the gameplay loop it's intended for isn't really in yet. I still really like it. There's a charm to it. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I really like, I really like it so far. Next episode, I will post that video of all the combat and the bounty hunting with the Harbinger, which was so much fun. And uh, I've got some other ideas for things I want to do that I haven't done yet, including refining and mining with the uh, Prospector, especially the refining part. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for now, so I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.